Okay, so in this tutorial, what we're going to be talking about is something I'm actually quite amazed Blender can actually do. It's actually creating a world space. <laughs> is so what you can actually do is create a world with an actual uh, sphere and you can have all the objects in the sphere. You can add clouds and then out of the sphere, you can add actual planets and they look like real planets. There's no HDRI here um, and I'm going to show you how this is done. Now, this scene, I will of course upload it to iMesh. So if you are a subscriber for only $17, you get access to this, all the other scenes and we are now approaching 3000 assets. So um, if you're interested in that for a very, very, very low price, then do check out iMesh. But I will show you how I put this together in this video. So so you can follow along and create these worlds yourself. So then let's get started. Okay, so what we've got here is a base scene. Now this is just a building. Uh, we've got some a pond of water here and we've got some trees and uh, foliage and this just looks like a nice scene. We have an area lights on the outside of the windows, which are shining light onto the surrounding area. It kind of emphasizes the light from the inside of the building and it sometimes has quite a nice effect. So this, this is the base scene. Now the scene is gonna get quite complex. So I'm gonna to try to walk you through how to set this up. So first of all, we need to add some sky light. Now the HDRI is basically gonna be the atmosphere of the scene, whereas the sun is gonna be outside of the atmosphere. So we need to separate those two as well. So let's start off with a sky sphere. And this is a sphere that I've just added. Just shift A, mesh, and add a UV sphere. Now we can put a sky texture onto that. Let me go into local view. I can go into render preview, and then I can do a Nishita sky texture, and I can plug that into here. Now there is no mapping for this, so it doesn't know how to project the HDRI onto this sphere. So what I can do is turn off the sun disk, and then I can add a texture coordinate, and then plug that object into vector here. And now we get a proper looking HDRI, but there is no sun lamp. But if I go back into the scene, we can see that this is now being illuminated quite nicely, but this is just gonna be the atmosphere and we do need to add a sun lamp. But let me first talk about the planets. Right, so I've added some planets here and now you can see that they are inside the sphere. So they are being illuminated by the sphere, which is not what we want. We want this to be outside of the HDRI. And these are also very basic in texture. This one's slightly red. And it also has a disk, it's a basic texture that, uh, that I created. And we also have these two planets here, which, which are basically a planet with a little moon. So what I'm gonna do is these need to be outside of the world. So I'm just gonna scale these up. I have the cursor roughly where the camera is. So no matter how much I scale them, they're always gonna appear roughly in the same location. But as you see here, if I scale them out, they are going outside of the sphere and they are disappearing. Let me just scale them quite far out. Scale them maybe by 100 so that they are quite far away. I don't want them to be influenced too much by the light of this HDRI itself uh, and any clouds and things like that. There will be light coming out of the sphere. So I do want them to be quite far away. But if I go back to the camera, they're gonna be roughly in the same place. Now, one important thing to note about this scene, my view distance is very, very far away. If this was the base value, uh, you won't be able to see anything. So I had to set this to be very, very large. And the same for the camera itself. If I had to set the clip end to be quite far away. I, I could, of course, scale this whole scene down, but then the lighting values became a little bit janky and it was a little bit harder to manage the, the lighting which I wanted. It was a lot easier just to go with much larger scales for everything else. But things do start to get a bit weird, um, but it does work. So if I go back to the camera preview and render that, we can't see the planets. So we need to remember that the atmosphere itself is not fully opaque. So if I click on the sky sphere and the material I created, by the way, is called sky. We need that a little bit later. So I'm gonna add a mix shader and then I'm gonna add a transparent B BSDF and plug that into here. Now we need to remember that there is no sunlight in the scene. And now that the planets are outside of the, of the HDRI, there is no light on them as well. This is now space basically. So we do need to add a sun. So under the world tab, I'm gonna make a brand new world. I'm actually just gonna copy this one and paste that here because it has the exact same values. And then I'm gonna duplicate that. And for this one, I'm gonna turn the sun disk on. So I'm gonna add mix color. I'm gonna plug that into the bottom one and the sun into the top. Now what this is doing is that we are saying that this one does not have a sun disk and this one does have a sun disk. And then putting it into a mixed color and then subtracting it, we're gonna be getting the difference of the two. And the only difference is the sun lamp so that's gonna be the only thing we see. So if I plug that in and set the this to full, we can now see that we have a sun which is infinitely far away. The planets now have light on them. And if I go back to the camera view, we should be able to start to see them here. So this is looking quite realistic. We can of course go to the sun sphere, the sphere and increase the transparency there. But I found about halfway, maybe a little bit more, can be quite realistic. But we also find that they are also quite 
hard to see. And there is also another problem. Now, let's say that I moved the elevation to one. We can see the HDRI is starting to go quite yellow because in the atmosphere, when the sun starts going down behind the horizon, it's going through more atmosphere, which casts a reddish look. Now, if I do the same for this, these two, we will then see that these planets also start to get the same coloring as the HDRI, which is not something we want. Now, the benefit of that is that the sunlight then does act correctly inside the sphere. So this is going to be getting the correct sunlight, which is very important. But we couldn't do that with the sun sphere because we wouldn't be able to get this vector component if I turn the sun disk on. So then we wouldn't get uh, the correct lighting. So I do need to have that plugged into there to turn the sun disk off. So we need to bring the sun disk back and that's now illuminating these objects here. But now the coloring is incorrect. So we do need to add some more light to simulate the sun lamp uh, just for these planets. So what I'm going to do now is add a sun lamp, a light and add a sun. Now this sun acts infinitely far away. And if I go to local view, we can see here that we can't see anything. Let's increase this to about 5,000. And we can see that these are now being illuminated by that sun lamp. And if I rotate it, we can see that that is now acting correctly. But we do need this also to be in the same direction as the HDRI. So we do need to add some drivers. This does get a little bit complicated. So just try to follow along as best as you can. Right, so on this, what we've got here is the sky texture. We have the sun elevation and rotation, and this needs to be following that exactly. So I'm going to press N, and I'm going to go to item, and we're going to change these rotations uh, to be driven by this HDRI. Now, I do have some driver set up down here. So what I'm going to do on the X component, I'm going to right click and click add driver. I'm going to delete this one. And here I'm going to type 1.5708 minus sun elevation. Now, um, you might get a message that pops up here to say uh, that there is a script trying to run and just click allow uh, this time. So oh, let's go back to edit driver. So then I'm going to add a new input variable. I'm going to set the property to be material. And here I'm going to type sun elevation. And then I'm going to find the sky material that I created. Now we need a path and I have one written here. And I'll paste that into there. So now if I change the elevation here, uh, we can see nothing happens. Um, this was something I was having quite a bit of a struggle with, actually, was drivers not automatically updating uh, throughout the whole scene. I think there's probably some tool or some script that will allow that to happen. But this hasn't updated. You just I just press S uh, to scale it, and it kind of gives it a jolt to actually then update. Now that has the correct elevation. So now we need to do the, the Z rotation as well. So now I'm going to do add driver. And then here I'm going to type 3.0. One four one five nine minus sun elevation. This is basically in radians. I believe that's 180 degrees. So now I'm going to do just delete that one and add a new one. And I'm going to call this one sun rotation. Sorry, this one should also be rotation. And then for here, I'm going to do that to be material as well. Set that to be sky. And then I'm going to copy this path here. Edit driver and paste that in there. So now we can see that the sun is going to be facing in the correct direction. So the sun is over here, which is correct. If I then change the the rotation here and just give this a jump, we can see that that has now updated to be the same direction as well. But now we can see that this main sunlight also isn't being driven. So we do need to add some drivers there. So I'm going to I'm just going to do uh, for uh, this one sun elevation, right click, copy as new driver and sun elevation paste as new driver and now for sun rotation copy as new driver and sun sorry rotation paste as new driver so now these two should be working correctly the same together these ones do actually update because they're in the same property um, so they do update automatically if I update this one so now this one is driving this one. So now this one from the sky sphere needs to drive the, the sky HDRI one. So I'm going to do a sun elevation, copy as new driver, sun elevation, paste as new driver, sun rotation, copy as new driver, and sun rotation, paste as new driver. So now all the suns are going to be facing the same direction. So if I change the sun rotation here, it won't update over here. We could just give it a bit of a jolt. And then these are then going to update as well. It's a little bit funny how that works. Um, I'm sure there is a way to make all these drivers update all together. But let's go back to the scene and see how this is looking. Okay, now we added an additional sunlight. We only want that additional sunlight to affect the planets. So I'm going to click on this sun. I'm going to go down to object properties. 
and down to shading, light linking, and we have all the planets within one collection. So I'm going to do click here and do type in planets. Click on that. So now this sun is only affecting the planets. So let's bring the, the sky sphere. Let's bring this back down to maybe about one. And then let's bring this round to maybe zero. And then just give these a bit of an update. Okay, now maybe the sunlight on those planets is maybe a little bit too strong. Maybe let's try 1000. And now what I'm going to do is add some clouds. So I have added some clouds. Now these are very, very large. So these are going to be acting as if the clouds are actually at the correct height. And I have different layers. And each layer has a different look to the clouds. So some of the ones on the top are a bit more wispy. And then I get some thicker ones down at the bottom. So we've got this layer at the top. And we've got this one here. And then we've got this one, which I've put set as a bounding box. So it's harder to see. Let me just set that to be... A wire. So we've got these three layers of clouds, but we can see now that the clouds are outside of the sphere. So I need to make the sphere bigger uh, because I do want everything to be roughly correct. Obviously, the planets are going to be much, much further away, but those don't have so much of an effect. I think that clouds at realistic heights does look better, a bit more realistic. So I'm just going to scale these all up from the origin point just until the sphere covers the clouds. I go back to the camera view and we can see the clouds over the top. And if I do render preview, we can see these now. But the benefit of doing that is that we are going to get some very realistic clouds in the sky. And this is how the clouds look. And to me, this is very beautiful. Every time I see it, I'm amazed that this can actually work inside a blender. It's incredible. So these are realistic looking clouds, which are working with real sunlight. And then we have planets in the background. This is looking very lovely. Now, just to show you how these clouds work, if I just hide a couple of them, like the lower one, do a render preview. This is very hard for my PC to, to render. There's lots of volumes going on now, but it's basically just a noise texture uh, into a color ramp. And then I can change the, the randomness of this. I can change uh, how many, how much clouds there are like this. Um, this is the setup here if you're, if you're interested. Uh, so I can change how thick they are. And then what I've done is I've plugged that into a multiply with a gradient texture. Now this gradient is going to make it so the clouds appear further away. The ones over here are going to be a bit more invisible, just like this. And that's going to be masking these out. So that then goes into a volume scatter into the volume output. So now we can see these clouds. So if I bring this down like this, we can see that the clouds are covering more and more, but I wanted to have these a little bit scattered. And then for some of these uh, higher clouds, what I've actually got is some bands. So sometimes in the sky, you get some bands of, of clouds and that is all being put into a gradient and, and then that gives that final effect, uh, which you can't quite see here, but all of these layers together worked really nicely. So the one thing that we are now missing is going to be the ground. So I actually have one made already. The one thing we do need is to have the, the an actual ground and something in the, in the distance. So I've got a ground here and it's very, very, very large. And this ground, which is in the distance, just has a displacement map on it. So it's looking like a little bit like mountains in the distance. So we have those mountains now in the distance. And then when I render it, we'll, we'll see them a bit more like mountains because they have displacement on them. But as they are quite far away and we are trying to simulate a real atmosphere, what I finally have is an atmosphere box, which is covering the whole scene. And that is simply a me scatter. And I probably should actually set these to be me as well. I'll give them a trial. But anyway, I set that to be me because it's good for uh, clouds and fog. And I'm going to use that to basically simulate the atmosphere. So I have that covering the whole scene. So let's move that over to cover the whole area. Let's scale this up a little bit, something like that. I'm going to render preview. And then those mountains in the distance are going to have a bit of a haze in front of them. Okay, so we can kind of see it now. So we can see that these mountains, they've got a bit of a haze on them, which is really lovely. We can also increase the density if we wanted to make it a bit more foggy, which is also quite a nice effect. And the amazing thing is that this is all just going to work perfectly inside a blender and everything is just going to interact with each other in the correct way. Uh, so this looks really lovely. So if we wanted to, we can in increase the sky elevation. So let's go to the sky sphere. And I can just increase the elevation, let's say, to uh, 5. And then do the same here. Let's just give these a jiggle. 5. There we go. And then also for the sun here, just give that a, a bump. And then this is all going to look quite nice. I also have on this ground. And then for the ground, I'm just going to turn on the grass. 
Okay, and this is the final effect. So the clouds are getting a little bit harder to see because they are actually quite thin. And as the sun is going through them, and it's not hitting too many of the droplets in the clouds. Now, when, when the sun was lower, it's gonna be hitting more through the thickness of the clouds, so they become more obvious. Now that tied in with the atmosphere box that I've added, it's adding actually quite a realistic morning haze effect. So we can kind of see the clouds a little bit in the sky here and we can then see the haze in the distance. This all just works really lovely. And what I just love about this is that we can just do many different values here and everything will just all work perfectly and we get just a perfect scene. Let's do, let's just get the sun, let's give that a nudge. Okay, and this is rendering, it's, it's quite slow to render, but you can kind of get the effect that I'm going for. It's just amazing how this just all works together. Now there is one last thing which I need to do, and that is actually going to be stars. So if I go to the sky sphere, and what I want to do is for the world tab, I have created some nodes which are simulating some stars. So I have a noise texture, and they are all going to be projected to the window. So uh, anywhere I move, they're always going to be at the same position to the, to the camera. Let me actually just make this 100% transparent. So what I have here is a noise texture and that is going to be plugged into a color amp to increase the contrast. And now the problem is with a noise texture is completely flat. Uh, so there's not very much variation. Whereas in the sky, sometimes you have some stars over there, some patches and things like that. So we need to create a bit of a mask. So I've created this Veronoi texture and I'm just going to plug that into this multiply so we can actually see it. It's a little bit hard, but that's basically going to be creating a bit more of a randomness mask. So we can see here we have some patches uh, which are a bit more realistic. And I'm going to be plugging that into a multiply to multiply the noise texture to this one. So we get some bits where there is going to be stars and some bits where there are not going to be stars. So if I plug that into here, then we can see that some of the stars are being masked out and we're going to get much more realistic patches of stars. Now then, we also have an effect where we have a gradient texture which is also going from the window and that's going from down to bottom because usually you see the stars easier when you look directly up than down because there's going to be a horizon there's always going to be some ground lighting which means the stars are always going to be easier to see directly upwards so i put that into a multiplier as well so the stars are only going to appear at the top oh sorry let's plug it into here so we can see it let's just decrease this and then i'm going to get the sun that we created earlier plug that into a mix color and that i've set to lighten plugged into a background node and plug that into that because then we can increase the brightness of the whole thing together. So then we can see some stars slightly there. When you render this bigger, you can actually see the stars, but it's quite low resolution at the moment, so it's quite hard. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is go back out. Okay, let's bring the sky sphere, the transparency back so we can actually see it. And there we go. So now we can start to see, I don't know if this is gonna show up on YouTube, but we can start to see some specks of stars showing up. And we've got some planets in the sky, beautiful clouds, and a beautiful building and reflections. And this to me is a finished scene. Now I'm really happy with the results. Of course I can do view layers and I can do different render passes. So I can do the planets, then I can do the clouds, then I can do the atmosphere, and then I can do the building. Of course we can do that way, but this is such a fun experiment to see if this is even possible and to know that it is actually possible and you can create one scene and have everything work together in the viewport together is just amazing to me. The fact that you can even just increase the sunlight so that the clouds and everything is interacting together is just amazing to me. I really love this scene and I really hope that the subscribers get fun playing with this and I hope that you can actually create some things yourself. Um, you will be able to take the clouds and the whole scene out so you can put your own project in there, your own building and create your own incredible star landscape. Um, you could probably add some more different colors to the planets, make them shine different colors or maybe add some, maybe some a spaceship in the distance as well or even a nebula would be amazing. <clears throat> Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please do give a like and subscribe. If you do like this scene, uh, you can get it from iMesh, of course. Uh, the subscribers at iMesh uh, are a huge help. I wouldn't be able to do this channel without them. And I'll see you guys soon.